me now is the host of the Horseman Radio podcast, also contributor at Three Down Nation. I've got Ryan Ballantyne. Ryan, how are we doing today, buddy? I'm good, Ryan. How are you? I'm doing quite good. It's a little rainy here in my part of the world, but I'm sure in Calgary, and you know, it's, called, it's what's called God's country. It's a, it's a pretty <laughs> nice day. <laughs> yeah, we've always got, uh, I mean, you know, the, the expression around here is if you don't like the weather, just wait five minutes. Um, Same here. We, we planned it all four seasons in 24 hours. Uh, it'll it'll be uh, it'll be snowing a foot, and then the next day it'll be 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So um, you know we we get the wild and wacky up here, but uh, but wild and wacky is uh, appropriate for the for the league we the, that we know and love. So yes, uh, yeah, uh, it's it's not so bad up here. Absolutely. All right. So my first question I'm going to ask this for I'm asking this for all of the other teams in this. So if you have one word to describe last season for your Calgary Stampeders, which word would it be and why? I'd say truncated. Uh, that's the word I'm going to use for last season. That's a, that's a good word in Scrabble. It's a, right? It's a double, double point score for sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I th- The season was too short for the Calgary Stampeders last year. They came down the stretch at six and two. They came out of not having a training camp because of COVID. Um, and getting right into the regular season, they stumbled out of the gate. And and really that 14-game season really kind of hampered their development. So uh, they were they were really not good in the first half of the season. But in the back half of the season, they looked incredible. A couple more weeks to gel, and I think the Stampeders might have been competing for the Grey Cup. So, uh, you know, the, the disappointment of not winning the championship last season is because of the truncated regular season. All right, so we're now we're moving to back to full season in 2022. Thank, thank the good Lord for that. Also, we avoided having to wait additional uh, wait for another shortened season because of the CBA. They got all that stuff figured out. I'm sure you you are in pins and needles like like most CFL fans. Yeah, just but, refreshing constantly. Yeah, <laughs> refreshing <laughs> refresh. Twitter over and over and over again. Re- refresh, refresh, refresh. So, what should a lot, what should you, what are you most looking forward to this season and what should other Calgary Stampeders fans be most excited about for the season? Well, I think what the Stampeders are most excited about is that they're returning most of their core mm-hmm. every year for the last three decades. The Stampeders get decimated in the off season by players who are moving to other cities to get bigger contracts, or they're moving to the NFL, which happens with regularity out of this market. And so Calgary mm-hmm. finds guys, they they mine their talent, they turn them into superstars, and then it seems they they send them out into the wilderness uh, to help benefit everybody else. <laughs> what we've got this season is a return of the vast majority of the offensive core, the offensive line returned almost en masse uh, with the exception of the returning Derek Dennis, uh, who's who's back for his third tour of duty. And uh, it played very well in that preseason opener. Um, and then we've also got Kadeem Carey, Bo Levi Mitchell, Reggie Bagleton, Kamar Jordan. You're not trying to find new pieces offensively. The chemistry is already there and it exists and it will allow the Stamps to hit the ground running on, on the offensive side of the ball. On the defensive side of the ball, they've just got some absolute studs that are out to make names for themselves. And uh, that's where you've got a, a couple younger players and a couple guys that are looking forward to getting their first starts. But um, Fuller and Oramalade stays healthy. Uh, that defensive line is going to be absolute dynamite as well. Now, there's something obviously a lot of teams are excited about what they're having this this what they're excited about what they're excited about this year. But what are some concerns that some Sam said that uh, this, you have for the Stampeders? Well, I think Bo Levi Mitchell's shoulder is our primary concern here in Calgary. Mm-hmm. Will it be what it once was, or if it's not what it once was, will it be a serviceable shoulder? Um, and uh, Bo saying he's throwing pain free for the first time, uh, you know, in in years. But at the same time, he came out in the preseason and threw two interceptions and had a turnover on downs in his three series. Um, mm-hmm. One of those interceptions, you know, was was a clear miscommunication with the receiver who who ran the corner route instead of the post route, um, and Bo threw to the post and it was picked off. Uh, the second one was a, a tighter contested ball in the end zone, but one that. The, the, the DB made a nice play on, but nevertheless, you know, three for 10 in his first preseason performance, Bo Levi Mitchell's health um, is, is the primary concern for this team 
going forward. All right. So let's talk about some of the some of the players that you're excited about this season. Which, which, who is one player in particular that fans of other teams should keep their eye on this season for the Calgary Stampeders? Well, I think I think everybody knows who Kadeem Carey is, but I don't think they know what Kadeem Carey is capable of. Uh, the Stampeders last year, when they started winning, it was because they were giving Kadeem Carey the ball. And so while he did end up, I think, with the second most yards in the season last year, he was really underutilized in the first half of the year. So Kadeem Carey could be the guy that surprises everybody in how dominant he can be when given the opportunity. Um, that That's the primary guy I would watch for in this offense. You can mm. see that the Stampeders are returning to – a more balanced approach than they've had in previous seasons. They kind of got away from that run pass balance uh, for a while and, and started moving from that kind of 55, 45, 60, 40 stretch into almost a 70, 30 run for a while. And, and they've really kind of, they got back to those margins in the second half of the season and it really paid off. So Kadeem Carey, again, if he stays healthy is going to be uh, the straw that stirs the drink, I think for the Stampeders offensively. Now I got to follow up on that on that question offensively. They got the the, the Stampeders are bringing like a lot of their receivers they had lost either because of free agency or uh, in Reggie Begleton's case, he went to the NFL for a couple of seasons and now he's back with the team. Depending on Bo Levi Mitchell's shoulder, his and his health overall, do you think that bat will have that will they'll have that? more established balance like between a 55 and a 55 45 60 40 or if his shoulder starts to let him down we'll have that 70 30 uh run to pass ratio especially with, with well, that, especially that with, 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 with a running back like kadeem hart yeah like like yeah uh, that would be wildly in the other direction i mean the stampeders have never been more than a more than a 60 40 pass run uh, mm -hmm. split so if it were even to get to 50 50 i think that would be a dramatic change here in calgary um but if you know with reggie bagleton being as good as he is with kamar jordan finally being healthy again mm -hmm. if bo can find them with consistency it it will start to become about what the defense gives the offense is the defense going to stack the box to try and stop kadeem carry and give us single coverage on those stud receivers downfield or are they going to drop guys back into coverage to not let Bagleton and, and Kamar Jordan beat you deep and instead take away everything from the deep ball and make you beat them with short yardage situation in the run game? So mm -hmm. it will be, I think, up to defenses how they choose to treat the weapons of the Stampeders, how the Stampeders will play offensively. I would expect to see it far more often that, that we see a lot of Kadeem Carey um, especially in the early going of games to establish that run. And that allows that big home run throw down to Bagleton or Jordan down, down the field. Okay. So my next to last question for wins in terms of wins, what's your ceiling and what's your floor for the Calgary Stampeders this year? Uh, I'm not sure whether or not you've heard anything about me. Obviously your listeners haven't heard me before. I only <laughs> have one prediction every season. <laughs> I have one. It's the same <laughs> prediction every season. It's 18 wins in the regular season out of 18 <laughs> games and the great cup because I'm a fan of this team. Yeah. And so as a fan of this team, and I don't know any fan that's walked into a stadium and said, well, I'm okay. If we lose this week, I'm okay. I'm okay. You know what? I'm, I'm, I think if my team loses five times this season, I'm going to be happy about that. No, you're not. You're happy about <laughs> in retrospect that they, but in the moment, you never want to see your team lose. So for that reason, I never predict my team will lose. We're going to go 18-0 and in the regular season. We're going to win both of the playoff games and take home a Grey Cup championship again because uh, the Stampeders have been the class of the league for 30 years, and that's not changing anytime soon. Well, if nothing, you're not you're, – you're definitely – I can't say you're not confident. Let's put, let's put it that way, Ryan. <laughs> Look, will it happen? Probably not. It hasn't happened since the Stampeders went undefeated in 1948. But that doesn't mean that I can't start out every season with the hope and fervor that finally the Stampeders will just do what I want them to do every week, and that's put up a W. All right, Ryan Ballantyne, thanks so much for joining me. Where can people find you on social media? Where can they find your podcast, and where can they find your articles? Uh, so BB can Ryan is, is where you'll find me. Uh, that is not an acronym for something else. As you can see from my skin tone, 
Uh, it's uh, <laughs> I was also on Big Brother Canada, and that's the account that was created when I was there. So uh, oh, wow. BB Can Ryan is how you can find me on all social media platforms. You can find the podcast Horseman Radio. We're uh, recording our first episode of our fifteenth season wow. coming up here. Uh, on Thursday night. So we're going to be recording that and putting it out. And then uh, so you can find Horseman Radio on all your major uh, podcast platforms. Uh, and then, of course, at 3 I write the post-game analysis every week for the Stampeders in their games. Uh, right now you can find out about what I thought about the 41-6 beatdown they put on the Lions just a few nights ago. All right, Ryan Ballantyne doing, a, doing lots of things for the Calgary <laughs> Stampeders. A little bit of everywhere. Thanks. A little, little bit of everything. Thank you so much for joining me. Join me on No Crunch is Required. Yeah, pleasure as always, man. Thank you.